Good afternoon all. So welcome back for the Atal FTP afternoon session on machine learning and infotainment system. So I have the pleasure of introducing Mr. Srihari, Srihari Shastri. So he is a senior architect for a speech dialogue system at Robert Bosch India. Welcome sir. Thank so, you. Uh, let me give a brief uh, intro about him. He has a nice resume. So if I have to say, just consolidate a few points about him, I would say he is a, a professional software architecture. Like uh, he has got his uh, certified profession architecture from International Software Architecture Qualification Board, which is a very prestigious board. And uh, he has a vast experience in middleware development for automotive in vehicle infotainment system product architecture and development cycle management across wide range of product lines from multiple OEMs that is original equipment manufacturers. Yeah, he has a knowledge of creating reusable building blocks for the PACE world. Now PACE world is in industrial electronic and uh, soldering and dairy network equipments. And he has experience in integrated Alexa auto software development kit in Genwin and Android based IV IVI in systems. And he's the primary contributor in the next gen speech dialogue systems architecture development. He is also um, very fluent in German language. He is a certified Ge German language uh, course. Then uh, he has represented Bosch in several global tech events. Am I right, sir? So please welcome. I'll hand over the session to you. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you, madam. So am I good to start? Am I my video audio is all clear? Yes, sir. It is all clear. OK, I will start the presentation now. Please uh, let me know. And it is visible. Yes, sir, it's visible. Thank you. Sorry, I have. Okay, yeah, so. Uh, welcome to the session on um, automotive speech dialogues and personalization. So the, the agenda for next one, one and a half an hour is that uh, I will start with the overview of NLU and NLP, which is the backbone of uh, speech recognition. And then I come upon um, how uh, this NLU is used in building speech dialogue systems for uh, uh, automotive products and uh, how NLU is also used for non automotive products a very brief thing and when then we can talk of um, how the traditional uh, automotive systems are now influenced with the advancements in AI and personalization and uh, how is the future for us? Uh, that will be the last thing. So please feel free to interrupt me anytime uh, as we go through. And we start with the overview of NLU and NLP. So um, to start with a very brief history of NLU and NLP. So as we uh, uh, know that uh, NLU and NLP is very famous uh, today, but uh, actually it's at least a 70 year old uh, topic. Yeah. So uh, it started with uh, NLU and NLP started in early 1960s or late 50s and early 60s with the as uh, pattern matching with very small rule sets. And uh, with the, the support from the linguistic experts and grammarians, uh, it become rich. 
and even uh, the fuzzy logic also started helping there so it became a uh, little more better uh, even though with restricted applications then and in coming to the 90s uh, with the help of math and the invent of statistical models so nlp again uh, nlp uh, natural language processing uh, took uh, a, became a leader over nlu and that was the case until the late uh, 2010s with uh, deep neural networks coming into picture again nlu came back to the center stages which now combines all these the pattern matching the rule sets the linguistics uh, neural networks language models all statistical language models hierarchical models hidden markov models with all those things uh, now uh, nlu is more advanced and it is uh, one of the backbone of uh, what we see as um, very it has entered every household in the form of um, alexa so all of us know alexa and most of us have it in our houses alexa and google assists so nlu has entered every household today yeah so let us understand what is the problems with natural language so what we want to do is we want to make uh, machines understand what we speak how we speak uh, and uh, it the ideal situation is that if i am talking to a machine machine should not really or i should not know whether i am talking to a machine or to a human being another human being at the other end so but in realizing this uh, there is a big challenge so we come across uh, we humans itself say for example when we are talking uh, to a customer care representative so if we want to uh, spell something if we want to give some input say my name so how we do we say my name is uh, shri hari then there will be it may not be phonetically clear so how do we do we do or say if you want to give our pan number or something then we along with the alphabet to identify an alphabet we associate that with a name of a place or an animal or a thing right so the natural language is really not natural language understanding is basically is not a very simple thing we human beings are inculcated this starting from early ages so and then it we human beings take at least around 10 years to evo evolve with this right so starting from phonetics what we teach to nursery kids so that's how the nlu of a human being is will evolve yeah but uh, we want machine to understand in a very short time because we want to enter into market as quickly as possible so that's the challenge that academia and industry together are trying to solve yeah so with the uh, ai what is the challenge so one is who can understand me so is it uh, anybody can understand or is it a, if it is a computer what is that computer does it any uh, computer or does it require a special specification special configuration and it can also happen with the too much of information that i can be lost a computer may not know what information to really process yeah and this is what we happen so especially with the search engine so uh, we will try to search something but we will not we may not be satisfied with the results yeah and then free so this is uh, something like again for the artificial intelligence it's a challenge so whatever the data that i give say for search engines or anything am i feeding data freely to someone or am i universally bossed say we don't know what is uh, who is doing 
if if someone with malicious intent is trying to surveil me yeah so these are all the challenges that ai along with the niceties it provides it also provides uh, these challenges and other than that there are a lot of things uh, like poetry uh, user manuals uh, the license agreements the um, uh, any uh, legal documents for example which are very very complex and to make them understand to a common human being it it's a big challenge so we will see some of those challenges in uh, next slides so uh, there is this uh, an example of a rule article 18 of some university which says that like that taking exams at an earlier date may be allowed at the request of the student by the vice dean for education with the lecturer's consent in justified circumstances blah 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 so so in in nutshell what this really means is that yeah uh, taking uh, an exam at a different date uh, is possible provided you fulfill some conditions or requirements so but uh, any rule for that matter will not be so straightforward as we speak right so to interpret this for a computer definitely if i uh, translate this into a flow chart it, it it it's not as simple as we human understands uh, as we speak yeah so this is an example of a rule of a university now let us see a little more complicated one which is uh, an indian constitution example from an Indi in the indian constitution article 112 it is about the financial statement yeah uh, so, excuse me sir yeah uh, yeah your slide is not getting changed have you changed your slide from first hmm yes one second is it changed now? No, not it. Okay. I yeah, the thing is I have three monitors. I don't okay. know from which. Ah no, this is the one you should be seeing. No, give me a second. Yeah, I know. I think the slide is not getting changed. Yeah, it's getting changed now. Thank you. Hmm. Sorry, I did not know. I was, I have three monitors, so. Hmm. No, it's fine, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I know, but it is not in the slideshow mode. Um, okay, is it still uh, showing? Can you see? Now you are in a slideshow mode. Yes, correct, yeah. Yeah. And if I just change the slide, is it? Uh... Yeah, it is getting updated. Okay, thank you. <coughs> so, okay. so uh, yeah, so this is uh, uh, from the Indian Constitution. So I just have taken this from directly from there. So I really do not want to go through this in detail. So it has three sections, and the section three has. Uh, seven subsections and some subsections have uh, subtopics uh, as well so such a complex uh, um, text so uh, processing of such complex text with the domain knowledge is the challenge for any uh, computer yeah so and we see uh, we see some more examples from uh, daily um, 
life for example articles in the newspaper yeah so newspaper headlines uh, will have intentionally they will make it ambiguous ambiguous just to uh, seek the attention or grab the attention so uh, examples like uh, juvenile court to try shooting defendant yeah or uh, doctor on trump's health no heart no heart cognitive issues yeah so it's it, there is also a, a hidden meaning uh, that they want to convey here so but the the machine also should be able to we human beings can understand this uh, because we are trained and we have evolved in our training and even machines should do uh, and they should also evolve yeah so <clears throat> then uh, something that we see in uh, uh, newspapers uh, tweets commentaries or even what uh, different speaker uh, uh, different people speak in different ways yeah so i made him duck yeah so what does that mean so is does it mean that uh i made him to duck the question or thus i made i prepared a, something food out of duck meat what is that so similarly the ambiguity over the syntax so often we don't when we write smss or some emails uh, we often don't care about uh, the grammar and the uh, syntaxes synthesis so flying planes can be dangerous what does that mean yeah and uh, one more so the word itself so here the bat flew through the air so this the word bat is ambiguous yes here so whether uh, is it a cricket bat or an animal bat so both can fly right so a batsman the bat slipped out of a batsman hand and it flew through the air it is possible and we have seen bats will really fly in the air so uh oh sorry what happened so uh that's the uh and then again a grammatical mistake so the boy and dog were playing in the park he ran into the a tree so uh, the reference is wrong or reference is ambiguous here he does it refer to the boy or the dog yeah um, that's what so uh, what alan turing says about nlu is that uh in a new systems basically is that the system understanding natural language on human level should contain a large portion of human knowledge and would achieve the most important goals of our artificial intelligence its response would be indistinguishable from that of humans so this is uh, the uh, primary goal uh, any ai engineer uh, should Uh, who is working on nlp and nlp should keep in mind that the response coming out of a computer should be indistinguishable from that of human beings yeah so this the 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 great alan turing had predicted or had defined this almost 60 years back yeah so that's 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 how old is nlp uh, so we will see the terminologies so nlu is a subset of nlp so and it said uh, uh, it's that branch of science which combines expertise from multiple uh, disciplines like language linguistics the cognitive science the data analytics uh, computer science maths algorithms and more yeah so it it's a very multidisciplinary subject then uh, what all the common tasks of uh, so we start with nlp here so what all the common tasks of nlp uh, they are uh, text parsing the text could be in any form file document web page tweets uh, anything then uh, we do information extraction 
so that is nothing but uh, the semantic classification then the text summarization which is nothing but sentiment analysis which can also include sentiment analysis then the similarity detection or uh, extracting or deducing the relationship keyword spotting uh, tokenization and the machine translation so we translate the text from one language to the other language these are the common nlp tasks so um, what do we have uh, in nlp how do we uh, do there are two techniques in nlp one is the syntactical analysis other is the semantical analysis the syntactical analysis is more to do with uh, how uh, the rules of the language so how particular uh, um, things are constructed sentences grammar phrases how they are constructed in a particular language so this is more coming from the language domain so this includes the rule sets of the gra language the grammar the dictionary meaning of words in that particular language and then we do with once we have this result uh, the syntactical analysis is over then we do with the semantic analysis the semantic analysis has again uh, is more to do with the uh, science and logic so it is uh, finding the relationship uh, <clears throat> creating the logical forms building knowledge graphs doing some predictions out of the natural language text and doing the annotations so we will see in uh, those things in detail so what do we do in the sy syntactical analysis the first thing that we do is the uh, stemming so in this uh, what we do is uh, uh, the longer word the long because for example each word will have noun form verb form like that so uh, all of them will give the same meaning so pure future tense past tense or so from that we try to uh, bring that to its root form that is called stemming and a better technique of stemming is called the lemmatization in lemmatization uh, when we cut the word uh, it's uh, the stemming is just cutting so it's uh, it, there is no logic involved there is no intelligence involved lemmatization involves the dictionary so what we do is we bring the word after cutting to its basic dictionary form yeah so for example here uh, we can see that an example uh, when we say ponies is the uh, word so it's 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 a plural verb word it's called as a plural noun so if we just apply the rule as cut all this is the english language right so when we have um, uh where how how the first standard kids are taught about singular to plural is if a word is ending with a consonant add s consonant consonants oval ovals so that's it so uh but the some singular scale will also uh, there will be uh, change in its basic form so for example ponies so where the the singular form of pony will be p o n y but in the plural it will be p o n i e s if i just cut s or e s then again there is no meaning so what we do is we do the lemmatization we convert p o n i to p o n y so that's the uh, lemmatization so we apply the language rules and deduce the cut word into its dictionary form that's the lemmatization then uh, morphological segmentation uh, dividing words into morphemes uh, word segmentation mm, uh, continuous text are split into distinct units then grammatical parsing then identifying the parts of speech so what does the, that will also help especially when we want to uh, we should 
especially for the use case of uh, the what I spoke here, the sentiment analysis. So we should know what is an what what if that word is an adjective or verb or uh, noun, etc. Then breaking the sentence uh, with logically breaking the sentence such that the boundaries are not lost when we have a continuous text. Uh, then we do the semantic analysis. So the first thing in the semantic analysis is named entity recognition. So uh, uh, what is a named entity? Named entity is nothing but uh, any word that indicates a name or name, place or an animal or a thing. Yeah. So then once, so that's the first thing. So we identify all named entities and then with those named entities, we try to establish the relationship. So then we do the, uh, like the example that I gave, word sense disambiguation. So finding the meaning of the word based on the context. So in the example that I gave, the bat flew through the air. So depending on the context, so if, if it was a cricket commentary, then that bat is that's how we disambiguate. Oh, then we understand that the bat referred there is not the mammal, it's the cricket bat. Yeah. And uh, then we try to do what is called as NLG, natural language generation. So uh, to if we use the databases or models uh, to derive the semantic invent, uh, intentions and then convert them to human language then the pragmatic analysis so that's the last step uh, of the uh, in semantic analysis so then uh, we go to nlu now so in the nlu so today we have seen with nlu an explosion of interest uh, both in academia as well as in industry so we have voice driven assistants now so in every household so to name a few are Alexa, Siri, Google Assistant, Microsoft Cortana, and it goes on. Yeah. So there is a natural language search in every app, music apps or uh, any any app for that matter, a grocery uh, app. Uh, every app uh, comes up with a natural language search feature. Hmm then the the voice bots so um, most of the for most of the operations at the call center are now replaced with the the call center operators are replaced with the bots now so and we really cannot distinguish whether it is a customer uh, service representative or if it is a bot so to that level the automation has uh, happened then uh, relationship extraction uh, sentiment analysis for automated trading. This is also a very huge uh, thing. So um, then legal discovery. So there are uh, the historically the legal data is maintained for more than 100, 150 years. So it's a very huge database that is uh, maintained. Uh, so unlike uh, some of the technical documents, the legal history is is quite va vast. Yeah, so starting from smaller courts until Supreme Courts in all the countries, every uh, 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 proceedings have been recorded and well maintained. So uh, the NLP has helped uh, the lawyers and the legal experts a lot now in understanding these uh, for their in, uh, for their new cases. Yeah. So then business intelligence. Again, this is a very huge uh, thing today. So the business intelligence. So um, there are, uh, it's a very high profile job now, the business intelligence. Then social media analytics. So we have seen. So the social media analytics is now actually influencing elections in major republics. So that's the extent to which NLU has um, 
influenced in this uh, area and uh, content summarization so yeah <sighs> so um, what does nlu aim uh, to do so make uh, aims to make sense of language by enabling computers to read and comprehend text, uses complex algorithms uh, to reduce human speech into structured ontology. So, and it goes beyond understanding words and even it can, it can deal with common human errors. So, that's uh, the NLU today. So what do we have in NLU? So we saw the NLP techniques. Now we, uh, what is it different at NLU? So NLU has three. One is symbolical, other is statistical, and third one is the hybrid, which in, combines both symbolic and the statistic. So symbolic is based on manually injected knowledge, the data that is available at say compile time which is nothing but grammars, frames, parse trees, etc. It's a more of a top down approach. Yeah. So what we call as the old fashioned DI before we had the neural networks. Then we have the statistical things, which is uh, uh, the knowledge that is extracted from the large corpora. And uh, this is a bottom up approach. So it tries to deduce and learn from the patterns, links, and which also includes the probabilistic reasoning. So <clears throat> that's where the machine learning comes into picture. And currently what we have with the DNNs is, what DNN has actually done is, it has injected the symbolical knowledge yeah, into statistics. So it is merging both. That's the about uh, NLU techniques. So what do we do in NLU? First, we start with the pre-processing. So uh, a document or a voice input is converted into para is split into paragraphs or sentences and words, depending on the hierarchy. If it is just a sentence, it will just convert it into st words. So it need not be that always we start with the document. Then uh, do POS tagging, the parts of speech tagging, and <clears throat> analyze the sentence for syntactical and uh, grammatical, uh, from syntax and grammatical point of view. That's the pre-processing. And then we do the syntactic analysis in the syntactic analysis, it will have find the structure. So uh, enhanced POS tagging. Then also identify the roles in the subject. Yeah? So subject, object, predicate, where noun should be placed, where verb should be placed. Is it in the proper order going with the language rules? And uh, output of this syntactic analysis will be a parse tree. That will be fed into semantic interpretation for a knowledge graph. So then we use the knowledge graph uh, to find the word meaning and how they are used in that particular language, trying to establish the relationship and interpret what is going to happen. So the result will be a more of a uh, logical and, and a conceptual graph and frames in case of speech input yeah and uh, use of the world knowledge now uh, with this information extend with the background knowledge or what we call as the historical data and do the incremental processing or refinement to achieve the final result so that's what uh, we do in most of the machine learning algorithms so and yeah, so what is the purpose that we are doing? Are we doing a summarization or semantic analysis or prediction, etc.? So um, next, a, a simple example. So the uh, this input sentence is here, Tarzan kissed Ian. So here first we do the parsing. It's we identify that it is a sentence then we split the sentence into noun phrase and verb phrase. From the noun phrase, we identify that 
Tarzan. This is going with English language that it always starts with a noun. So simple. So first word of a sentence, because this is the only input that we have. So there is no previous sentence or a next sentence. So we start with the first one that is nothing but. So we identify first word as the subject yeah, or a noun. Sorry, noun here. Then uh, with the, again with the rule. So it, we identified that it's that's the verb. But unfortunately, we also have a third noun. Yeah, fortunately or unfortunately. So then uh, somehow we identify that is also a noun. So now we have two uh, nouns and a verb. So now we have to identify who is subject, who is uh, object. Yeah, so that's what we do in the semantic interpretation. So we identified that there are two with the named entities. We also identified that these are named entity recognition that Tarzan and Jane are uh, name of people, name of persons. Yeah, so with that uh, we have identified that now we do with the graphs. Yeah, or the tree structure. So we identified Tarzan is a person, Jane is a person. Uh, then we identified uh, in the next step we we give. It's not we don't identify. We we assume or we give that uh, uh, classification. We classify Tarzan as agent and Jane as an object. Yeah, or subject and object. Yeah. Uh, then what is the uh, what what was done is they they kissed each other yeah so and then we also uh, identify something that something uh, the instrument and now we extend the semantic interpretation with the world knowledge or the contextual uh, interpretation this is where the historical data comes into picture uh, yeah then we go and identify uh, what is Tarzan. Yeah, so uh, OK, so Tarzan based on the name oh, we and other uh, world knowledge. So we uh, identify that OK. Uh, so this um, Tarzan usually is something who uh, is uh, associated with wild. Yeah. So maybe he might have a pet which is cheetah. Yeah, and then uh, so since he is associated with the wild and he has a pet cheetah, this this information comes from world knowledge. So historical data. So we identify that the, this thing happened in the jungle. Yeah, so the location we finally deduce as that this happened in the jungle. So this is the how the NLU or uh, powered by machine learning will happen. Yeah, a very simple example. Uh, now with this uh, very brief uh, information about NLU, we see how uh, this is deployed as an application in infotainment systems inside the car. So uh, basically the this feature was introduced in automotives as a security feature. Yeah, so that um, uh, not as a convenience or a comfort feature. Long back this was introduced in uh, almost 30 years back in automotive mainly for security because Generally, the it's not about generally. It's also a, a safety guideline that uh, any display yeah, should not be at 90 degree to the driver. So it should be away from the driver. So with that safety guideline. So what happens is if uh, if we are driving in in highway or even for that matter within cities, so we should not take our concentration of the road and look at the display uh, for maps. So and the the distraction can lead to catastrophe. So with this intention, the whole speech feature that is both recognition as well as the text to speech output 
was introduced as a safety feature so that user is informed user is uh, informed prior about where he has to turn or how he has to go and even if he wants to do something some operations while driving he need not take his even say for example i know my route every day that i go to work from my house to my office i know my route yeah but if i while on the way if i have to make a call or if i have to receive a call then the driver should not get distracted himself or herself of the driving so it should be possible for him to place a call even while driving without any visual distraction so this is the primary intention with which the safety uh, critical uh, aspect of which led to introduction of speech in uh, automotive way back but with that when but now it has become more of a comfort feature yeah with uh, advent of smartphones and personal assistants voice based personal assistants it's it's also a security but it is now security plus comfort so uh, and we should know the difference between the speech recognition and voice recognition so the speech recognition is nothing but it can recognize the system the speech recognition systems can recognize anybody who is speaking independent of who is speaking it only uh, re recognizes what is being spoken not who is speaking thus that part is nothing but the voice recognition so if that voice recognition is associated with a particular speaker particular voice and then we have dictation so the dictation is nothing but free text input so you keep speaking something and it it converts that to text so that's what we see in google so in the in most of the google assist uh, apps so whatever we speak we see that uh, text coming as a display so and it is different from the speech recognition yeah so some basic technologies to remember terminologies to remember in speech so phonemes and phonetic transcriptions so it's nothing but a phoneme is nothing but a speech alphabet so like we have uh, the alphabets of a language uh, the there is a corresponding phonetic representation of each and every alphabet and that phonetic or the voice representation is called as a phoneme and collection of phonemes is a phonetic transcription then grammar or the context that is nothing but what system can recognize that is the grammar then the language model so very important aspect uh, the language model because uh, the way uh, this is driven by both the language as well as the geography so the way we speak english is different to how a native uh, brits or americans would speak english so each even even in in every language there are different dialects yeah so uh, i mean even the local languages not only the global languages like english french or spanish every language for example uh, has its own dialects across the regions the language model combines all these aspects and the the frequency with which speak uh, the speak so for example if i take uh, a example of kannada the way we speak in in the southern part of karnataka and the way people speak in the northern part of karnataka is different it's also with the frequency with which people speak the energy so if if i capture my voice and uh, convert that into uh, a wave file and check its amplitude of those sound signals it will be different to a person uh, of my age uh, a male a male of my age from north karnataka region it will be different the, the 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 energy levels will be different the frequency will be different so similarly a male and female voice so Uh, these are all the characteristics of a particular language and these things are captured in the language model and uh, there are many uh, 
technology providers here. So uh, Serens, Amazon, Alexa, Google Voice Assist, etc. So this is how the the uh, the speech technology in automotive evolved, uh, starting from uh, early. So it started with uh, a simple vocabulary of uh, just 50 words when it was first um, came to market. Then the vocabulary increased to 500 words. Uh, uh, then uh, in 2007, what we call as level three. So the word size, the grammar size uh, dramatically increased from 500 words to up to 80,000 words. So and um, even providing address input uh, was possible. And uh, what we call the next revolution was including NLU. So there, as you see, can see in this slide, the word size is no more a parameter. So with NLU, anything and everything that a human being can speak should be recognized. Yeah, and we should be able to provide one shot voice address. So for example, I should be able to say to my car that please take me to uh, 16 10th cross in our colony Bangalore. Yeah, so that's a one shot address starting from house number. Uh, street name, city name, then even optional state also. So if I give this whole sentence in one shot, that's called a one shot destination entry. So that is that should that is possible for the entire country, say for example, India. So you can imagine what should be the database so we should have the map of the entire india in the speech format that the system can recognize and then we have the next thing that is called the level 5 speech that's the hybrid speech where uh, with the advances in the cloud infrastructure so what happened is the speech recognition not only happens on the embedded device but also happens on the cloud but the user doesn't know that's how the siri or the google assist works so you never know where the recognition is happening right so uh, that's the hybrid speech and today we are at l6 which is nothing but uh, it is not just i ask so i try to do a phone call or anything it has become a personal assistant. Now I have a personal assistant, which I use the I use my voice. I use speech input to ask anything. Yeah. So um, these are all the so it's not a simple uh, it, it's not. This is not uh, uh, these applications are not restricted to a particular uh, region or particular uh, country. It's, it's spread across from America to China to India, Europe. Everywhere we can see uh, inside the car, we have uh, speech dialogue systems. So, and the languages supported are worldwide. So currently as many as uh, 40 plus uh, localized languages are supported. So across the globe, uh, so from Hindi to Hebrew to uh, Greek to Russian to all the global languages with different dialects yeah, in a natural language way. So these are all the different uh, uh, domains uh, that are supported. So we, that is split into three parts. That is infotainment control, the vehicle control and the connectivity part. So in the infotainment controller that is more related to within the car. Uh, so doing infotainment actions like listening to songs, browsing through phone book entries, asking for traffic information, setting the destination address, etc. Then we have the vehicle control, setting the temperature within the car, uh, 
if you when the rains when it starts raining uh, opening the wipers or controlling the sunroofs uh, the window control body control etc then the connectivity so asking for uh, the information from the web so uh, that's that's the domains so now uh, we are coming more into uh, the specifics of the automotive so with the um, uh, automotive uh, with the um, uh, revolution that is happening that we are moving from uh, we are moving towards the autonomous driving the automotive in architecture is shaping towards these uh, what is called as the domain controllers so currently yeah, if you take any car uh, uh, for that matter there will be uh, at least minimum 20 ecus ecus means electronic control units so they are doing for different applications so we have an ecu for engine control so we have an ecu for braking there is an ecu for body control that is all the windows uh, wipers etc then there is a, uh, an ecu uh, even our infotainment device is one ecu then there is uh, an ecu for safety systems so the abs airbags all those units have individual ecus fuel injection systems so fuel monitoring systems the, the information cluster that we see so at least at least even a a very uh, entry level car like uh, a suzuki alto or a tata nano will have at least 20 ecus and this number goes up to 70 in uh, in in the very um, luxury cars like rolls royce or bmws so but going forward with the increased uh, demand of autonomous driving and corresponding hardware demands so these uh, ecus are getting combined and they are co being combined into three different uh, verticals yeah that is called assisted and automated driving so they are called domain controllers so uh, uh, the three domain controllers that can be seen in any car going forward will be assisted and automated driving that is more related to the engine control and uh, autonomous driving then the body and motion which includes body powertrain monitoring etc and then the uh, infotainment information and domain computer this will include both the radio the the infotainment system as well as the cluster and also the connectivity module so today we have most of the cars within themselves connect come with the connectivity right so telematics control unit the tall collection unit all those things uh, along with the infotainment and cluster are categorized as the third inform connected information domain and then there are a lot of nomadic functions the nomadic functions mean these uh, applications should be able to run on any of the three domain controllers yeah and uh, uh, so the going forward the 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 uh, the demand is that we should have more and more nomadic functions such that uh, we should be able to have very um, seamless integration and all of these all of these uh, applications should be uh, able to be updated via the FOTA. FOTA is nothing but firmware update firmware update over the year over the air update yeah and also do predictive diagnostics predictive diagnostics meaning we should be able to not the diagnostics after we should be able to detect the fault in a car much earlier the fault happens yeah so with this uh, domain controllers 
we uh, we the we are in the connected information domain so how a typical uh, connected information uh, domain computer would look like is this so uh, <clears throat> there will be a hardware layer um, i don't know am i going uh, too slow okay um there will be uh, is it okay if i take uh, another 10 15 minutes extra beyond 330 yes sir you can continue okay yeah. so uh, there will be a hardware uh, soc so uh, it can be anything so um, from any of the supplier on top of that there will be a base software or nothing but the software platform which could be android or uh, any linux based or a qnx op based operating system along with the automotive op operating system like autozar and then there will be middleware services and then the uh, application or the gui that we see so um, here i have marked speech as both middleware as well as gui because speech is will be the speech output will be presented to the user right so um, so how does a speech uh, dialog system look within a car is that we will have um, um, basically speech dialog system is nothing but the interaction between the user and the system through voice right so this is achieved with something known as a dialogs yeah so a uh, user presses push to talk and then speaks something system tries to understand that and comes back with the response so typically what will happen is user presses ptt and says tune to 98.3 fm so system tries to understand the speech input and asks okay do you want to tune to radio mirchi then user says yes and then the tuning will start or it will be other way uh, uh, user presses ptt and say um, call my wife yeah so tr system tries to uh, interpret and find the corresponding number and says okay calling blah 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 number yeah so uh, so this involves so if if you can visualize this what happens is there will be a component called recognizer which will uh, listen to users input from the microphone so that gets that does uh, recognition mm, and then gives the text input text output which to the dialog manager the dialog manager understands that this is uh, an intent what is the intent so every command will be uh, split into two parts one is the intent other is the content so intent is what is user trying to do and content is is with what he is trying to achieve something so in the example that i gave so tune to 98.3 fm here the intent will be tuned content will be 98.3 fm yeah or intent will be tuning to fm and content will be 98.3 megahertz so uh, the dialog then asks the user okay do you, it's a it's it's not only a visual feedback it's also an audio feedback so via how that is achieved is via the text synthesis component the text synthesis component will convert any uh, speech into text yeah so then uh, sometimes the onboard recognition may not be sufficient it has to go to cloud so there is another component called the speech cloud so which will establish connection with the cloud provider uh, transfers the audio and gets back the result and uh, that result will be presented to the user then we have the gui presentation layer uh, for confirmation with the user then what we also have to uh, do sometimes is that so when user pairs a phone or inserts a media device we should be able to phonetize them so that user can browse his uh, media content local media content on the phone or should be able to make a phone call so for example without user connecting a phone it is not possible to make a phone call right so but when user connects the phone the system will read all its phone book entries and once after reading the phone book entries it converts them 
into the speech format and uh, they will be stored as data models along with the language models and other information so this is the typical architecture of a speech dialogue system within the car uh, now we will see a, a very small uh, information about uh, how speech dialogues can also be how speech recognition systems are deployed in uh, non automotive products also so now we have a uh, very um, uh, speech recognition enabled household appliances so the refrigerators imagine a situation that you are watching your tv on the um, in your living room and you are able to control the washing machine yeah so that's such a nice feature right that you don't have to really go and unload the washing machine or turn off the washing machine so you are able to control that through voice or while going home that you see that okay milk is there or not you ask your fridge whether there is milk or not and then the refrigerator tells you of course it's all connected it's not just speech feature it's a it's an iot feature but still so you can later after going home no blastings from the other better half right so that you did not bring this you did not bring that so you ask the fridge fridge is smart and it responds you back so uh, that's what so now with the, whatever we saw as an as a safety feature in automotive has become a comfort feature in non automotive yeah so now we are able to deploy speech in everywhere yeah so and uh, there are many advantages also for example even um, uh, the the many people uh, have this uh, craze for riding bikes uh, very long distance bikes right so uh, now we have smart helmets so the smart helmet will have a bluetooth speaker and a microphone and the speech recognition system runs on the bike cluster so that we can connect a usb or uh, do bluetooth pairing and uh, the the bike rider when he goes on long distances can continuously listen to songs or receive phone calls make phone calls etc so that that's a very fantastic feature and then uh, the speech assisted features in uh, medical domain yeah so it it so it is so helpful for the doctors who are performing uh, surgical operations or diagnostic operations and then uh, also in the uh, in the uh, very interesting use case that we in in bosch we deployed was uh, in bosch car assist, car service centers yeah so the in the car center service centers the mechanic will be uh, they will be doing uh, operations their hands could be tied yeah they it could be greasy or they might be busy doing some operation but they want to record some observations so what they have to do is either they have to clean their hands or uh, keep the tool off and then record so we provided a speech solution for them so uh, so we provided an app in that app they can keep on recording their observations irrespective of uh, while doing their uh, their check so that, that that's a really a very um, helpful use case yeah so like that so speech now has solved many practical problems uh, uh, not only in the automotive so uh, but now the shift is towards the personalization so we will see uh, very briefly about the um, personalization so what's happening is that so what does uh, in now currently in the connected world the user is really confused yeah so uh, that's why the assistants are needed so what assistants do they offer shortcuts fitting to the current situation yeah and predict most probable next action and also do faster activation of what user is 
desiring to do yeah and of course reduce the distraction much and uh, do it all within privately so uh, what all we have done what all the uh, the personalization is includes is media playback phone call settings seat adjustments so uh, typically in a car we will have multiple at least at least where there will be two users of a car right so depending on the uh, who is driving making seat adjustment hvac settings light settings yeah the driver modes also so for example all the cars now offer different modes sports economy normal etc cities highway etc so depending on the road the it should switch automatically so that's what personalization brings into picture then the driver assistants so what is uh, the the personalization or the knowledge model we call it as knowledge model knowledge model does is it not only reduces the driver distraction for a safe drive but also enables many personalization features how it is done we will see in the uh, next slide so it constantly learns the user preferences and recommends the next likely action so it learns it senses the contextual data the behavioral data the contextual data could be vehicle data the current location the weather in that location date time how many people are present at that time etc and then the behavior data how user spoke something so uh, <clears throat> audio selection destination uh, the emotional detection everything then it it builds a knowledge there is a knowledge manager so it keeps tracking the user behavior it does the context analyzation uh, and then based on that it does the prediction and also does a continuous learn and adaption based on this it also uses the information coming outside so it's not that sorry uh, and for example even when uh, say for example if two people are driving a car so the driver need not always control the car the infotainment basically or even turning on the wipers turning on the ac it can also be done by the co driver yeah or any uh, any person who is sitting inside the car so these things and it can be done even outside the voice so the person can do without speech input they can do haptically as well right so all these things will be recorded and used for uh, personalization yeah so currently how it is there in a typical uh, what we have studied is that there there are minimum uh, 35 interactions are needed with three physical buttons yeah what knowledge model does is that it reduces those to nine interactions and no physical button needed yeah so we also have wake word so now we don't have to always do push to talk it can be with uh, assisted with wake word like alexa alexa is the wake word so similarly we have a very specific wake word for each of the car yeah uh, and it these are all the different activities and where they are recorded yeah so this is the uh, architecture yeah so of a uh, personalization engine so we have uh, a physical layer mm, with uh, then an application layer uh, connected with uh, the personalization app and then there is a presentation layer yeah so um, how do we do so we do what is known as user action clustering so and uh, so they they are described by the range vectors the centroids and the different uh, cluster points so then we use uh, the method of retrieve reuse revise and retain for uh, the <coughs> recommendations and those recommendations are the weighted recommendations so 
what the the whole background is a graph database so this graph database is a, a configurable thing so they are configured and extended by json schema files and uh, it increases it is scalable with the number of users so and it can also be connected with a cloud application so what typically happens so whenever there is a new use case for personalization uh, it, it goes with the user experience study because this is more related to user experience then understand the context yeah uh, after understanding the context we do the software uh, in the test environment validate that again do the ux study ux study with the ux experts and fine tune the model and that model will be deployed in the product yeah so uh, what we have done is that so with the as the interaction goes as the system learns the precision also increases so you see that uh, for media we tried around 157 iterations and then to reach uh, uh, precision of up to 80 percent so similarly we have this kind of uh, thing um, summary of different uh, learning and then precision saturation so uh, yeah so we can do this on independent of uh, operating system there are standardized apis so we do it very secure data handling because when we talk of personalization it has lot of personal data involved so that is very important aspect uh, security and privacy so all these things should be taken care so if there is time i can present this uh, video maybe i can come to that later how personalization works so what are the future trends so uh, in the future trends with uh, uh, nlu and uh, speech recognition so what is happening is in what will happen near in near future is that with autonomous driving so the best way to engage the driver is through voice right so driver engagement systems will become very common uh, when we go to uh, autonomous driving and that will have uh, a a compounded effect when we have the pooled taxis the automated driving the driverless pooled taxis so they are not only engagement there there will also be a personalization required so that's the next uh, disruption that is coming and then we have to have system driven dialogues so currently we have the speech dialogues the, the when you ask something from the system the response is very uh, limited so but for example in future uh, it it should be very uh, cognitive right yeah then uh, we already have for example in a home we will have at least uh, um, in a house we will have at least three smartphones and three smartphones can be either apple plus google apple and android or all apple or all android but in car there are requests that oem wants all all of them so they want uh, uh, alexa they want google assist they want uh, bosch speech dialogue systems they want everything and they want to give provide this homogeneous uh, user experience so that that's a big challenge managing three big uh, technical giants right so for anybody so and then uh, combining multimodal hmi so like how we interact so combining the when we talk to a, uh, another human being we convey not only through voice we convey through i we convey through our gestures we convey through eye gaze so for example if two peers are talking in front of their boss it will never be through voice it will be always gestures or with eye gaze right so similarly our machines should also become if going with what alex alan turing has told the machine should become so much intelligent so we have to combine 
uh, not only speech, combine all sorts of human input like haptic, touch, speech, gesture, eye gaze, everything. Yeah, so that's called multimodal HMI. Then the voice biometrics, so a keyless car. So everything, the, the, the car door opens with the user's voice. The engine starts with the user's voice. Everything with uh, uh, that's the voice biometrics. And uh, more and more support or better support for Indian languages. So this is uh, what is in uh, what the technology is offering us as a challenge in near future. Uh, so if I have time, I can play the video. Otherwise, I end my session here. If you would like to play the video, you can play, sir. Uh, how long it will be? It will be very short. It won't yeah, be. you can, sir. No problem. Till 3.30, we have time. It is just three minutes. So is it uh, visible, my screen? Yeah, it's visible. So this is the, one second. The weekly business call. Um, was the audio visible, audible, yeah. sorry? Yeah, yeah. Okay. it was coming. OK, so uh, two, three use cases, including the personalization is explained here. We will just go through. The weekly business call. Typically, without the Bosch knowledge model, for a weekly business call, the driver takes their eyes off the road to take several steps, including checking the calendar notification, scrolling through contacts and other actions before being able to make a routine call. With the Bosch knowledge model, your vehicle knows you have this call every week and what your personalized phone settings are. Therefore, decreasing the number of distractions and times you take your eyes off the road. Navigation is something you use almost every day, yet it can create numerous driving distractions. Without the Bosch knowledge model, it is common to encounter a number of distractions when setting up navigation to find the best route home, and then another distraction to open the garage door. With Bosch Knowledge Model, your vehicle knows when you typically. So I thank uh, uh, the BNM University, uh, Dr. Shashikala, and her team for giving me an opportunity. And uh, that's it. I'm open for questions now. Participants, do you have any questions? Okay, sir. Uh, it was a wonderful session. Uh, thank you so much uh, for giving the valuable information with respect to the autonomous details. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye.